the RO membrane is in that canister there, and the canister has three ports. We have a green, goes in this side, this is the water in. We have the blue, which comes right here, through this clear in the valve. That's the output, or the permeate, is what permeates the membrane. And we have this right here, the red, which is the brine, or the concentrated mineralized water. And it flows up through, and goes through that flow restrictor, and out of that flow restrictor into the permeate pump. The purpose of the permeate pump is to what? Is to increase the output pressure on the tank side, or the house side, or the supply side, while simultaneously decreasing the permeate pressure. The low side of the membrane is then dropped down further relative to its input, which does what? It increases the pr pressure differential across the membrane, which increases the output. The other way we increase the pressure differential is to put a small pump on it. Now this guy is just a small NSF uh, rated and approved like a mobile home type of pressure pump. It's used, it's driven off a 110 low voltage. It has a built-in head switch that cuts it on and off. It is adjusted to about 100 PSI cutoff. This switch is the low side switch that runs the house. So when the house sees that it is about 25, 35 PSI, 20 to 30 PSI, I guess I have it said. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's been several years. It tells this guy to come on and start generating water by running the pressure up. It's set on a silicone rubber base, the little feet. It's isolated so that it doesn't make a lot of noise in the house and the water comes in through the system side and eventually goes through there. Now, this little valve and that little valve are for nothing more than to keep from giving the needle shot when the diaphragm pump pumps because it will break, it will break that needle, break the, uh, the meter, the gauge because it is not a liquid field gauge and, and that diaphragm pump, is, although the volume is quite small, the pressure is pretty good when it runs and it'll actually break it. So that's these are used just as like tiny little orifices and that's just to save the, the gauge. The other gauge I showed you all ago is the house gauge. You see, by using the permeate pump, I'm actually able to generate some pretty high pressures on the supply side of this. So I don't know what, that's over 40 PSI right now on the house side, which really increases the delivery. Now right there, you see the brine drain. After it comes out of driving the permeate pump, we have to drive it out of the house. So we have a little, a little P-trap, which keeps the uh, sewage vapors from back flowing into our house. We just have a simple air gap. This isn't connected to anything. It's just laying in the dry pipe. It drips down. The water stays at this level, so it can't back siphon into my pipe. And then it just fills the water into the, into the house system. And when the thing is generating water, it clicks through. Now, there's one unique feature to doing a whole house system, one modification you have to consider, and it's next. While poly tubing can be fairly clean, by just how they make it because it's a, a hot extruded material and the nature and the size of it is done in rolls and one side is usually buried in, you know, on the spool and the other side is usually wrapped with some kind of shrink wrap or something holding it to the spool. Water pipe is not. Now I'm going to show you this thing right here and point out to you that this is not what we call drain waste and vent pipe. That's a, that's a two inch pipe. 
that that is a two inch schedule 40 pressure rated pipe and if you were to build one of these you would have to make darn sure you got two inch schedule 40 pressure rated pipe because drain waste and vent pipe which is a non pressure pipe this down here is a drain waste air vent it doesn't it doesn't have any responsibilities for pressure and the piping is not pressure rated and the, the piping can be made with a type of uh, compressed foam when they make it which if you put that stuff under pressure it may rupture and split and put shards of plastic all over you so you have to get a pressure rated pipe even if you have to buy a small section and now what this thing does is it takes care of the fact that water pipe is inherently filthy if you have water pipe in the United States it's brought in on trucks, untarped most of the time, open ends where the road dirts and felts and things, they're, they're allowed to lay in dirty warehouses and nowhere else. And so now that you have in, in an RO system nice clean water, and what does water made from an RO system have in it? Essentially nothing, including chlorine or any kind of sanitizer. What does your pipes have in it if you build a whole house system like this? Because our little piping here goes to the entire house. Every sink in the house has a separate little RO tap and I'll show you one and a fill rate here in a little bit. But it's plumbed just as if it was another another knob, another sink outlet. All that pipe is dirty when it cut first was put into service. And so it had germs and mold and mold spores and dirt and everything. There's no way to clean it because you cannot mix bleach back in with your system to sanitize it because bleach and membranes don't get along. It's part of the job of a pre-filter is to take away the chlorine that might be in it. Now I, in earlier stage in my water system, have a large carbon filter takes out all my residual chlorine just right before I bring it into the house so I don't have that issue either. Now let's look here again. This guy, I can introduce bleach or 50-50 bleach into this system. I can introduce now a bypass. I can shut off the RO system, the membrane, and I can bring water in and I can pump it through and I can bring it through into the system and introduce it into the tank and out of the tank, in through the carbon filter, and in through the house. And then I can go down to anywhere in the house and run each of the taps until I flush uh, bleach water through. And once I get a concentration of bleach uh, showing up there, the chlorine shows up, then I let it sit for a requisite amount of time until I've killed off any little buggers in there. And then what I do is I back flush it again. I drain all that water back out and I flush it uh, with uh, my system water. And then I let the RO system generate it and pump all the way back up. Because if I don't do that, I can't kill off any of the inherent molds and germs and things that are in my piping, not in my water, but in the piping used to build the whole house system.